Now what could be better than rainbow cards? I know, rainbow butterfly cards and I've got two to share with you today. Hello and welcome back to another Take Two with Therese at Alter New and today I'm going to be making two beautiful butterfly cards but they're going to be rainbow and I'm using this swallowtail butterfly die set and it's a layering die cut set and there are three amazing butterflies in here but the best thing about this set is the size of the butterflies they are enormous <laughs> now I actually store my dies on especially when there's lots of bits and pieces I just use some magnetic adhesive sheets of paper and stick them inside my packaging and then put it inside a pla plastic package as well it works well for me all right, so I'm going to create my first butterfly with some watercolor. Now I've got some watercolor paper from Altenew. It's from the paper pad. And this is a nice smooth white watercolor cardstock. I've got the artist's watercolor. And what I'm doing here is the typical Roy G. Biv. So if you're not really sure about what I mean about that, it's basically the rainbow colors. So red orange, yellow, G is for green, B is for blue, indigo, and then violet. So they're basically the colors that make up the rainbow. And you can kind of mix and match it just a little bit and blend and create your own, which is what I'm doing here. So rather than use a red, an orange, and then a yellow, what I've done is I've actually joined the red and the yellow together and they blend to make the orange in between. It wasn't so obvious with the orange, but look here. <laughs> when I added the blue to the yellow, immediately I got the green. So you don't actually need to have all the colors to create the rainbow. You can actually blend the colors or not. You can paint them, let them dry and add the next layer if you want to be more controlly about it. But I wanted a kind of washy, bright watercolored butterfly look here. So I do actually keep an eye on the size of the cardstock that I'm working on just to make sure it's going to be big enough for the die that I want to cut and that the color is going to be where I want it to be on the die cut. So you can just use your die and line it up over the um, actual watercolor and um, make sure that you've painted enough area, <laughs> basically. I have die cut the only one of the layers of the detail large butterfly in some jet black cardstock and then once this panel was dry I could just come in and sort of choosing where I want the die cut to be so that I can get a little bit of each color throughout my butterfly and I could actually use this other panel to create a card it would be lovely too so the black die cut, I only want to adhere it in the actual center where the body is of the butterfly because I want the wings to sort of be a little bit mobile. I'm not actually physically popping them up with any foam tape, but you could. There are clear, there's clear double-sided foam tape, or you could just cut some tiny bits of black if you were that enthusiastic. <laughs> and this is going to be a very clean and simple card. So I have some obsidian black ink and I'm stamping some splatters rather than creating mine you could certainly just splatter away if you feel the need but this is from the inky bouquet stamp set it has about three little splatters within the set and they're kind of fun when you want that control over your splatter and I just grabbed a beautiful plain kind of font sentiment from the crystal frames stamp set and used some obsidian black ink to stamp that out and then I just popped up my butterfly on the front of the card. How gorgeous is that watercolor rainbow butterfly? <laughs> now my next card is also going to be a rainbow butterfly but a little bit different. This time I'm actually going to be die cutting my butterfly from the um, this is some design paper from Alton U and it's the gel printing it's soft washes and I'm addicted to this I'm telling you now but um, I do want to show you that I do use my brush tool to get out the, the tiny pieces from the 
butterfly die cut but you could also use a pokey tool or just use your um, fingers to do that I just find it easier sometimes when there's so many just to make it a little bit quicker now I wasn't sure initially where I was going with this and how I sort out what colors I want to use I literally just hold it over the design paper until it makes me happy <laughs> and in the end because I knew I wanted to do a rainbow background this time I decided to keep my butterfly um, almost monochromatic uh, this cardstock from the design paper is uh, a little bit thicker than normal paper so and it has a slight sheen to it so I do like to use a liquid glue to hold it together and that works really well. I did add a little bit of dimension under this butterfly wing with some foam tape though. I do want that to sit up just a little bit. Now here is how I'm going to create this rainbow. This time I'm only going to use three to four colors I've got the Frozen Delight set and it's very pale. I wanted a very pastel kind of rainbow. So I do need a red. So I chose the strawberry to be my red. The butterfly itself I thought was too much like the pistachio color. So then I decided to go for the yellow, which is the lemon ice. And then the mint chalk, which sort of has that little bit of a blue undertone. So I thought these three colors would work really well for my rainbow. And then I thought again. <laughs> I thought I might just need something a little bit darker so I decided to um, grab the blueberry as well. Now I'm using my large Altenew blending brushes. I do have one for every family of colors and I did clean my brushes before I added my ink to this is a piece of cardstock cut the same as the uh, front of a card 80 pound Nina four and a quarter by five and a half but what I'm doing here is blending my rainbow colors like I did with the paints but I needed to make sure my brushes were clean because the inks are so pale and when I say clean I mean like I didn't wash them or anything uh uh no way <laughs> I just used some paper towel and rubbed the brushes on them until there was really no ink coming off them the same thing is happening here again I'm actually focusing all my colors down one side of the card but as I'm blending my three slash four colors, they're making colors in between. So I did end up with a bit of orange and a bit of green, even though I didn't choose those colors as such. I thought this card would be a really beautiful sympathy card. So I've got a sentiment that I'm stamping in some silver stone and that's from the Fragile Foliage stamp set. And I really like the fonts. And when I say I really like the fonts, I really, really like the fonts in this set <laughs> and the sentiments. They're just lovely. I had these white die cut hanging garden leaves already cut from a previous project that I didn't use. So I thought they'd look really pretty over top of my rainbow. So I just used some liquid glue to hold them in place. And then once I kind of just dried a little bit, I could flip the card over because I've attached that panel to the front of a side fold card now. And I can just snip away the edge bits. And I think that that white die cut looks amazing on the rainbow and a very pale pastel -y rainbow too. So this is a very different from the first card. I know, but they're both rainbows. Can you guess which one I might? like the best <laughs> if you know me you already know the answer to this leave it in the comments below I'd love to know if you guessed correctly if you like rainbows and butterflies and if you liked today's video please click on the thumbs up button and if you haven't already please subscribe what are you waiting for there's always something new coming along at this channel and I look forward to seeing you here again next time till then happy paper crafting bye